Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my tanning routine. I'm going to run through the products that I use to achieve my tan, how I use them, and give you some tips and tricks for along the way as well. So if you like the sound of this video, then make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button below, and I will uh, just jump straight into the video. Just been Laurie has turned up outside and the noise is horrendous. So if you guys can hear that, then I apologise. Okay guys, so the first thing that I'm going to do is explain to you the fake tan that I use at the moment. So I'm currently using a Superdrug Own um, fake tan, which is the Bronze Professional Ready in 60 Minutes Sun Kissed Moisturiser Spray Tan. I use it in the shade Medium Dark because I do like to be quite a few shades darker than I naturally am. Obviously because I've got red hair, my skin is super, super pale. So I just prefer to have a tan. Um, I know that people look fantastic with pale skin, it just isn't something that I feel suits me at all. So this tan is the one that I will use probably twice a week. Um, what I normally do is pop this on on a Sunday before I start work on Monday, and I'll put it on midway through the week, or maybe towards the weekend if I'm going out for a special occasion. Okay, so what I'll normally do once I'm about to start applying my tan is, first of all, I'll obviously be having a shower. So when you have a shower, you do not want to have a shower with boiling, boiling hot water, then get out and try and apply false tan. Because what's gonna happen is all of your pores are gonna be open, the tan is gonna sink into those pores, and it's gonna leave you with what almost looks like little pinpricks on your skin. So the tan is gonna sink in and it will leave like a really dark brown or black dot everywhere that you've put it, so that's definitely not the look that we're trying to go for. Seriously, that does spin lorry. Okay, so what I'll normally do is before I start applying my false tan, I will always, always have a shower first. When you're in the shower, if you're gonna have a hot shower like I normally do, make sure that before you get out, you put the water onto a freezing, freezing cold setting. That's just gonna help close all of your pores so that when you come to pop your tan on, it's not sinking into those pores like I just explained. So what I'll normally do is come out of the shower and pop on some moisturizer. Now I don't put this everywhere because if you put a moisturizer all over your body before you're putting fake tan on, you're gonna find that the tan is less effective and the color that you're gonna get is obviously gonna be less dark. So what I'll do is I normally use this Dove Silky Nourishing Body Cream. It is quite thick. Um, it's really good for winter and, and things, this, and it smells absolutely amazing. So what I normally do is I will start at the bottom. So I will put this on my feet and around my ankles. I'll put it on my knees, on my elbows, sort of around the sides of my face here, and any other areas, especially my hands, that are gonna be a problem and that the fake tan tends to cling to. So once I've done that, I'll probably leave this on for about an hour before I then start applying the false tan. By which point, hopefully all your pores on your body are gonna be closed and you're not gonna get that stippled effect once you start applying your tan. Okay, so once I'm moisturized, the hour has passed and I'm ready to start fake tanning, what I'll do is I will get my spray. Now this, I normally spray this directly onto my body and then I'll rub it in with a mitt. Another took me eye out with that then. So I'll rub it in with a mitt. Um, this mitt I've been using for ages. It is quite dirty. I do need to pick up a new one of these today when I go shopping. And I will just rub this into my whole body. Again, any problem areas like hands, knees, elbows and feet, I will always, always leave to last because they're the areas that the moisturiser has soaked into and you're going to get less colour build up. So I will show you my elbow. For example, when you use fake tan on a regular basis, you're always going to have those days in between where your tan is starting to come off, but you're not quite ready to apply a new layer of tan because you want to leave it for a certain amount of days. So you're going to get problems like this, where your tan is sort of sticking to certain areas. It does it on both of my elbows. I always have an absolute nightmare with elbows. Um, and it's sort of peeling like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you guys now what I do on my in-between days. Um, in between days, like I say, are normally the days when your tan is not looking as hot as it should do. You don't want to put fake tan on every single day because you're going to just get such a colour build up, you're going to look ridiculous. Okay, so once you've applied your fake tan, you want to leave it to dry. Now this stuff is amazing. This dries in three minutes, so I will normally leave my clothes off for three minutes, then put something really baggy and comfy on. This is a t-shirt that I will normally use for fake tanning, it's super, super baggy. I'll just put on some pyjama bottoms or some jogging pants, something like that that isn't really tight fitted to your skin and also clothes that you don't mind ruining because 99% of the time you're going to get fake tan on them. Most of the time it does come out in the washing machine but sometimes I have been known to stay in clothes so I always wear something old that I'm not really bothered about ruining. Your tan's on, you've got your comfy clothes on and you're sort of semi-dry. 
if you have any problems in terms of feeling your skin feeling tacky, which sometimes happens, so I will sometimes feel a little bit tacky in my elbows here, even after the three minutes is up. So what you can do is if you get some Johnson's baby powder, you can actually brush that onto the problem areas. It's hopefully not going to take away from the colour. I've only done this a few times, so I don't, and it's a hack that I actually found on YouTube. So when I did it, I didn't notice any colour change, to be honest, from the tan. So you can literally just a tiny amount on and it will just keep that area dry so that when you're moving around you don't feel quite as uncomfortable. I will tend to do my tanning routine at night before I go to bed. So if I'm going to bed, I don't obviously want all my skin out on show because I don't want it to be getting all over my bed in and I don't like that smell of it tanning my bed. So what I'll do is I'll pop a onesie on and then hop into bed with socks on. So anything that's loose fitting that covers your body is absolutely fine. If you don't like to sleep in fake tan, which a lot of people don't, that's absolutely fine as well. You can just do it in the day, but I'm generally running around in the day, getting sweaty, messing about with my hair all day, tying it up, putting it down, moving around so much that it's just super, super uncomfortable. And obviously you don't want to be splashing yourself with water when you've applied your tan because that's just going to pull the colour off. Okay, so... I've just explained what kind of fake tan I use on a sort of regular basis. Now I'm going to explain to you guys what kind of fake tan I use for the in-between days or just to top my tan up when I feel like it's not quite as dark as I want it to be. So I'm currently using the Sally Hansen Airbrush Legs. Now this is makeup for your legs. You spray it on and it just makes your legs super tanned. It makes, it's almost like a foundation for your legs and it is really thick. Don't remember how I discovered this, but I've been using this for absolute years, and I just use it, like I say, on the days when I feel like my tan is fading and I just need a little top up. Now, this is water resistant, however, it does come off in the shower. So, if you use a loofah or um, a shower, sort of a scrubbing mitt in the shower, which I always do if I'm trying to get fake tan off, this will come off with soap and water. So, this isn't permanent, it's not gonna, you're not gonna be stuck with the colour build up over the other fake tan. Once you're finished, whatever it is that you're doing that day that you need to be tanned, you can scrub this off in the shower and you're absolutely fine, good to go. So, me and myself, I am having one of those horrible in-between days when my tan is coming off and it is sticking to certain areas. Now, I've been moisturising, I have been scrubbing this for the last three days to try and get it off, but as you can see, on my hand and places like that, the colour does build up. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how I apply my sort of top up tan if you like and it is super super easy it literally i spray it out onto the mitt and apply it straight onto my body i'm actually going out today as well so i need i do need my tan to sort of look a little bit decent so what i'll do is like i say i will just get the mitt on my hand give it a good shake because it is an aerosol and then spray an amount out onto the mitt so i'll turn it around so that you guys can see hopefully i won't spray this in my own face and i just do circular motions like that then once I've got it on, I'll start, I always start with this part of my arm. So I will just start rubbing this in. And obviously, like I say, it is quite dark, but on an in-between day when your tan is fading, this stuff is absolutely amazing. So I normally smooth it over my hands and then go back and do my hands properly so that I'm not putting too much product on there. And then I obviously need a little bit more for the top of my arm. So I'm just gonna spray a little bit more on, go back in with this one. Now this is super, super blendable as well. It's not like when you're applying a normal fake tan and you feel like you're gonna get streaky and things like that. So if I just move this strap, you can see the color difference already on my shoulder as to what it was like before. And then I obviously just blend it in. Now I'm putting a t-shirt on today anyway, so it doesn't really matter about this part. The only parts that you can be able to see are sort of my lower arms and my chest. So they're the areas that I'm gonna focus on now. So that side is absolutely fine. This stuff goes on super, super easy, super, super quick, and it dries so fast as well. So I'm just gonna do the exact same on the other side. Spray it on in a circular motion, and then I will just start applying it onto my arm. Now, if you're having problem areas, like I've just pointed out with my elbows, sometimes you can get those to blend in slightly with this, using it as a top up. However, it's not gonna look perfect. I'm more than used to the fact now that my elbows sometimes look a little bit orange. I think, it's because I'm putting too much product on when I'm tanning. But the thing is, I love tanning so much that I think I get carried away with the amount of product that I'm actually putting on. So that is definitely my bad. So I'm just gonna keep rubbing this in, make sure that there aren't any areas that are gonna be too noticeable. And then I'm gonna move these straps out of the way and I'm just gonna go in and do my chest because you're gonna be able to see that today once I've put my t-shirt on. So on my chest, this looks super, super dark, but it's okay. It will match the rest of my body. 
when I'm putting my foundation on as well, because I've already got my makeup on this morning, if I'm putting this on as a top up over my skin, I'll normally drag my bronzing powder down my neck slightly, sort of to the bottom of my neck when I'm applying my foundation, uh, when I'm applying my makeup, sorry, just because if you try and apply this onto directly onto your neck, that can obviously be a problem area sometimes for me, and it tends to cling, whereas if I layer this over the top of a powder, it, I don't get the same effect. So I'm just gonna quickly finish rubbing that in, and that is absolutely done. So my face obviously now looks a little bit light, but obviously I will be putting some more makeup on later. So that is literally how easy it is to get this product on. This retails for around £9.99 per canister, and this will last me ages. I used to use this religiously every single day instead of using a permanent fake tan because I was always so worried that I was gonna be streaky and I was gonna end up looking like that forever. So I used to use this on a daily basis, but obviously now that I've got Lucas, I do not have time to get up in the morning and apply this every single day. So I will just apply this, like I say, when I'm having an in-between day. So what I'm gonna do is I obviously need to go back and finish my hands. So I'm gonna take the tiniest, tiniest spray and go back in around my hands. Now I'll normally start with my fingers out like this, go in between each finger with the mitt just to make sure that you don't get those white patches because when your fake handle starts to come off, white patches on the insides of your fingers are very, very noticeable. <laughs> And then once I've gone around my fingers and around my thumb, I'll then bend my fingers like this and you can see all of the little white patches on your knuckles and then I'll just rub my knuckles into the mitt to make sure that all of the white patches inside my knuckles are covered too. Sounds a bit strange and it probably looks a bit weird as well, but it's the only way that you can actually get a good coverage over your hands without putting too much product on, if you find, if you find that You've put too much product on, you can just rub it back down your arm and it's only gonna build up the color that's on your arm, it's not gonna streak. This is literally the best thing that I've ever found for achieving a tan that's not streaky. Now, Sally Hansen do do this as well in a cream version and I have tried the cream version, I've got it here so I can show you guys in a sec. And it just doesn't work for me, I don't know why. It's obviously something to do with the formula, I think because this is an aerosol, you're more sort of in control of the amount of product that you're putting on. Whereas with this cream, it's super easy to get a really heavy handed with it. So this is what the cream version of the airbrush legs looks like. And this again is in um, the darkest color. This just says deep, whereas the canister actually says deep glow. So this states as well that it is like makeup. Um, and it just says on the back of it, smooth on leg, makeup stays fresh and natural looking all day, covers freckles, veins and imperfections. This lightweight formula is water and transfer resistant, which is all true. However, the colour, I don't think that the colour payoff that you get with this is anywhere near as good as the colour payoff that you get with the aerosol. And obviously in this sort of light, I'm sat in front of a huge window at the moment, so it probably looks maybe slightly orange, I'm not quite sure. In the ca When I'm looking at myself in the camera, it does look quite orange. But in the daylight, this is beautiful and it just gives you that summer glow all year round. I absolutely love it. That is my normal tanning routine. Hopefully you guys have found this helpful. If you guys have any tips and tricks that I've not mentioned in this video that you think would be helpful for the people, throw them in the comments box below and give us all a shout and let us know. If you like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button too. And I will see you guys in my next video.